Good morning and welcome to everyone from MIT School of Government. Welcome to this webinar on post COVID-19 world order speculations and realities. Today we are living in a very unprecedented situation, something that we really have not witnessed or experienced in the past, in the recent past or any time in the known history that uh, almost entire world is locked down, economic activities are at grinding halt and there is great uncertainty about future of this world that what exactly is going to happen. First of all, when we are talking about post COVID-19 world order, uh, it is still not clear when exactly we would emerge out of this pandemic. It may take a couple of months, it may take another six months, or it may even take a year or a period longer than that. However, the processes to tackle this pandemic and how the world should be and what role one's country can play in the future world, those processes have already begun. Now, this particular situation of uncertainty and to a great extent, a psychological and economic depression. It has also given rise to a lot of speculations that what exactly is going to happen. One of the speculations is that whether it is an end of the capitalist world order. Capitalism, which has been a dominant force, dominant ideology and a dominant process in the world for almost 200 years or more than that, whether it is going to be an end of it. If so, then what next? And then there are other speculations like what is going to happen to a rising power like China and aspirational power like India? What is going to happen to the existing conflicts in the world, etc.? And many are predicting that this is going to be an end of rise of China. So this is another speculation that is doing the round around the world that now Chinese rise, which the world has been witnessing over the last 20 years or so, and at a time when China was considered to be at the position to acquire a dominant role in the world, is uh, considered to be at uh, uh, to, to have reached almost its end. So that's the another speculation. And along with that, uh, there are speculations about uh, the processes of nationalisms that uh, were already in the world and what is going to happen to those processes, etc. So first of all, when we talk about the world order, uh, let us first try to understand what do we mean by the world order. Uh, in a very simplistic terms, uh, whether there is any order in the world, whether world is orderly or not, whether there are processes that everybody are following or not. Orderly would really not mean that everyone are equal, but everyone would follow a particular order in which uh, there might be equality of the actors or there might be hierarchy of the actors, etc. And on that count, uh, what exactly is going to be the future of the world order in the post COVID-19 world is a big, big question. But exactly what is the world order when uh, the coronavirus entered our lives uh, at a very grand level, it was the Westphalian order, wherein uh, there was great importance to nation states, nation states were and are considered as the principal actors, the most important actors in international relations and everything in international relations is being uh, shaped, dictated by the nation states. So before the entry of the coronavirus, we were in the Westphalian world. Now, when exactly this Westphalian world emerged, now for many, particularly in the West, uh, this has been the order for at least uh, last three centuries or so. However, that Westphalian order was constrained only to the Western Hemisphere as those principles of Westphalian order, principles of independence, sovereignty, fixed national borders, etc., were mostly applicable and were implemented by 
the independent countries in the western hemisphere the european countries united states and to some extent uh, countries like japan in asia but more than one third of the world was colonized till the mid of the 20th century and these westphalian principles really were not applicable to them so the westphalian order truly emerged at the global level only with the process of global uh, of decolonization that's in 1960s and 1970s the universalization of westphalian order happened and uh, the principles of sovereignty independence were became applicable and were cherished by countries all around the world now this westphalian order as it became universal post second world war it has seen at least three phases uh, the first phase was that of bipolarity during the cold war period that there were two superpowers there were two great alliances and uh, that also has a process something called non alignment movement which tried to maintain sovereignty and independence of large number of countries in the bipolar world this bipolar phase suddenly ended in 1991 and that has given rise to another phase the second phase and that was a phase of unipolarity where in united states became the only superpower in the world and uh, uh, it it uh, the principles that united states cherished at that point of time it looked like those principles would be those processes would be accepted by almost all the countries all the people across the world and therefore uh, the world would ultimately be united states centric united states led and where in united states would be the ideal and would also be the dominating power this phase continued at least for two decades from 1990 to 2008 9 or so during this phase itself many countries they developed their own aspirations to become one of the poles in the world to ensure that world would not remain unipolar united states would not remain the only great power superpower in the world or so and from 2008 9 onwards these aspirations have, have have given way to the actual processes of emergence of multilayered multipolar world so this was the third phase in the westphalian order that the world has witnessed in recent past that countries like china india japan turkey indonesia brazil russia south africa some of the european countries some of the international organizations like european union asean african union etc all of them wanted a multilayered multipolar world wherein there would be no one superpower there would be no two or three great powers but multiple powers and the desire was of uh, having greater role to fastly developing countries to countries that were subjugated by the western world for centuries and uh, therefore countries like china india were asserting their claims in this third phase phase post 2008 9 now this phase was generated because of the global economic crisis the west was badly affected by this global economic crisis however countries in the east particularly china southeast asian countries india were comparatively doing good and therefore it was considered that now it was time for these countries to play their due role in the world order and thus the process of multilayered to multipolar world it gathered momentum from 2008 9 onwards it has given rise to institutions organizations platforms like uh, say g20 or brics where in developing countries they wanted a greater share in shaping the world and now we are seeing that under this backdrop the corona virus crisis has emerged now this third phase itself could be divided into two sub phases the first one was from 2008 9 till 2015 16 where in it was still a uh, cherishment of the goals of uh, uh, globalization free trade the liberal principles across the world uh, with the uh, only uh, only change would be in the principal actors who would uh, lead this process so earlier it was the western world and then it was thought that now it would be countries like china india 
could lead this process so there was no change in the core principles but it was continuity of the principles of globalization it was more or less continuity of the principles of the liberal orders where in countries that were not having greater share they wanted more share and they want to wanted to lead this process so this phase it again sub phase rather it again abruptly ended in 2015 16 when countries in the west particularly have seen rise in their nationalist sentiments they became more protective nationalism became uh, word uh, we, we we became uh, quite popular in political field and leaders who proclaimed to be nationalist they gained more confidence of the people two very very important uh, phenomena that happened one was election of donald trump as president of united states and brexit in united kingdom so these two processes have suddenly changed the uh, process of globalization it, it, it the, the reversal of globalization became very evident and uh, from 2015 16 till arrival of uh, a mysterious something called coronavirus in our world uh, this sub phase was continuing and under this backdrop now everyone is contemplating that what exactly would be the future of the world what exactly is going to happen and uh, in this context the great question that arises is whether coronavirus covid 19 uh, is it uh, that disruptive to end the processes that were already in place and processes that were shaping up this world to me coronavirus was not a disruptive phenomena or it's not a disruptive phenomena but it's proving to be an accelerator to the processes that began in the world somewhere in 2014 15 uh, when 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 uh, nationalism was on rise protectionism was on rise there was a lot of disenchantment with process of globalization etc so coronavirus at least in the short term is going to accelerate these processes which were already taking place and even without coronavirus uh these processes really would have impacted the world order impacted uh, the systems in the world in next at least 5 uh, to 6 years or up to 10 years or so so coronavirus has accelerated these processes so what were the characteristic of the sub phase that we had seen just before the entry of coronavirus so one of the important characteristic of this phase was that of trade war between united states and china but other countries like japan south korea countries on the european continent countries like india we are also getting involved in it directly or indirectly one way or the other that was uh, uh, the new process that world had witnessed just before corona virus the second was as i have in, uh, mentioned it was a rise in nationalism from far east to the far west with certain exceptions like canada we have seen rise of nationalistic leaders and nationalistic sentiments everywhere in the world in japan in china in india in great britain in many other european countries in russia in united states etc so this was the second important characteristic of the sub phase that was before the corona virus the third one was with regard to disenchantment with global institutions and also disenchantment with regional cooperation the problems in the european union and brexit itself was a uh, 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 a great example of it but there was also a disenchantment and to some extent a retreat from global regimes uh, united states declaration of withdrawal from the paris climate pact pact or withdrawal from the uh, arms control treaty with russia uh, are indicative of it and on the top of it there were no further emergence of powerful global regimes rather uh, those who wanted these regimes to continue they 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 had to spend uh, much of their energy in continuation of these regimes but it was not the expansion of the global regime so there was disenchantment with international institutions 
and also ineffective of United Nations as a system. And uh, the fourth uh, characteristic was that of intensification of the old fault lines in the world. So what we are was happening is happening in West Asia, in Iraq, Iran, Syria, etc. It was just intensification of the old fault lines which were uh, lying there from the mid 20th century, even from or, or even or prior to that. Uh, the tensions in East Asia, in Southeast uh, China Sea. So it all were re-emergence of the old fault lines, uh, which was a feature of uh, the world immediately before entry of the coronavirus. Now, what impact coronavirus is going to have on these characteristics? All of these processes are going to be intensified even in the presence of menace of coronavirus. Nationalism is going to be on the rise. Trade protectionism, trade war is going to be on the rise. Uh, there is going to be growing disenchantment with the existing global institutions, uh, which is uh, again being demonstrated by uh, by by uh, uh, the attitude towards World Health Organization or inability of United Nations to act effectively at a time of such a great crisis. So it is showing that the old institutions, the uh, institutions that were particularly created in the post second world war order, when the Westphalian order truly became universal. So those institutions are becoming ineffective if they are not crumbling, but certainly they are not effective anymore. In this time of crisis, even though there is a great scope and there is a great need for regional cooperation, However, we don't see regional cooperation is taking place in the time of pandemic. There are certain exceptions like India's initiative to revitalize SARC, to convey an online SARC conference, to create a SARC fund, etc. But uh, apart from that, we really don't see that uh, organizations like ASEAN, organizations like European Union going step forward, organizations like Shanghai Cooperation going step forward and um, uh, doing something extraordinary in these extra, in, in these extraordinary times. So the regional organizations, even though there is an opportunity for them, there is a space and need for them to play more effective role, they are really not doing so, which again is in continuity with the uh, phase that was there immediately before the coronavirus. So uh, the coronavirus has accelerated the process. Uh, which already was there uh, before March 2020. And in a fundamental way, it is uh, really not introducing new processes. It is only accelerating the existing processes. Now, the question that uh, is more important, pertinent on the Indian point of view is what are opportunities for India? What are prospects for India uh, in the post-COVID-19 world? And there are certainly good prospects, good opportunities that are coming India's way because of a backlash against China, uh, a backlash that was in the making for quite a few years, uh, particularly amongst the Western countries, uh, which again was intensified because of the COVID-19 process. So uh, the bonhomie that existed between Western countries and China for quite a long period of time uh, at least for 30 years or so, uh, now it's not going to exist at least in the short to medium term. And uh, there lies an opportunity for India uh, to attract more investment, uh, to uh, give boost to its Make in India campaign and thus try to uh, fill up the gap in the supply chains in the world. So that's a great opportunity that is there for India. And another opportunity for India is at the regional level, wherein India can uh, coordinate efforts to tackle the pandemic in South Asia and can assist, help its smaller neighbors, other countries in the SAR uh, by creating new processes, by going uh, step uh, forward uh, in, in, in helping these countries to fight the pandemic, even though the effects of uh, coronavirus are uh, 
much less on south asia as compared to west europe or united states uh, but still india can uh, create more influence can create can win more hearts in south asia and without winning south asia india really cannot take a step further so this is a, another opportunity that is there for india and the third opportunity for india is to think out of box with regard to the world order if india really wants to become an important player in the world then world has to be a connected world in a disconnected world there really would be no value for india or india would remain as a master of its sub, sub regional order uh, that's only in the south asia if if world really is not connected so to become a leader one of the leaders in the world what is required is uh, to ensure connectivity in the world and at a time when uh, west is really not keen in terms of maintaining connectivity and china wants to have its own connectivity in the form of belt and road initiative and any such other initiatives uh, india has to think out of box that how it could cooperate with world powers how it could cooperate with aspirational powers and how it could cooperate with developing countries in the world uh, to create its own space and with this regard uh, we already have a fine example of non alignment movement where in even when india was lacking hard power capabilities but india became an important voice in the world so whether we could do something like that on those lines what exactly it would be it would require great brainstorming but without doing that brainstorming and without thinking out of box uh, india really would not be in the position to uh, make most of this crisis to convert this crisis into opportunity right now what we are thinking we are thinking only on the narrower lines of how to attract investment that is fleeing from china that is important that india should do but india really need to think beyond that what exactly that would be really would require a, a, a greater brainstorming but without doing that uh, no country has emerged as a great power united states has emerged as a great power because it has created its own language its own processes its own institutions in world politics china also tried to do so through belt and road initiatives through shanghai cooperation organization through the aiib brics g20 etc so india also needs to take such initiatives and most importantly india has to plan for next 20 years domestically and at the uh, and, and 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 at the global level as well there are no shortcuts to become a leading power in the world crisis provides you opportunity but in the crisis you also need to do long term planning and if you succeed in implementing that planning with minor adjustment once you emerge out of the crisis then only your importance would would, 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 would increase in the world and that that, that, that would uh, involve a long long term process at least a 20 years process in india we are really not we really have not shown the capability to think beyond 4 to 5 years and that remains a disadvantage uh, for us at the global level so there are opportunities there are uh, possibilities uh, good possibilities for india at the time of crisis but we really need to show uh, brainstorming we really need to uh, sh- uh, we need to come out with a long term planning and then only india would be able to increase its weight uh, in the world order so with this i uh, conclude my presentation and would like to take uh, some of the questions uh, on this issue let me uh, check uh, what the questions uh, are there well <laughs> uh, mutharsan is asking will socialism be followed by the world as i initially said that there is speculation that people are speculating that whether this is going to be end of capitalism this crisis has shown limits of capitalism that capitalism really has not been able to create a health system that could support people at the time of pandemics it has failed to uh, 
to 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 uh, just envision the health crisis the pandemics that could uh, create so many problems in the world also and that's because few corporations uh, they are dictating health policies the pharmaceutical policies of majority of the countries whether that is going to change that's not going to change at least in the short to medium term and because that is not going to change i really don't see that uh, we we are uh, living behind capitalism any uh, any time soon uh, the multinational corporations the monopoly organizations all of them they are going to further strengthen their grip over economy over society and also over polity they are going to take advantage of this crisis and uh, information technology is going to play a great role in coming days now information technology is increasingly being monopolized by few corporations or few multinational companies and this trend is going to increase and they are the ones who are really going to dictate our lives there was a chance or there still is a chance for uh, enhancing cause of socialism however uh, we really do not have strong agencies to do so at this point of time and therefore what we are seeing is that people are falling back on the on on on, on the authoritarian state they are uh, uh they are uh, uh trusting the uh, authoritarian state the nationalist leaders more because they do not see the alternative and in the lack of alternatives i really don't see that there is any chance of enhancement of socialist causes in the post covid 19 world then uh, we are have i am uh, having questions uh i don't see much questions uh there is a question by rangam saha bjp being in the power in the center talking about integral humanism or socialism market economy is it happening or they are far away from their ideology i think this question is out of purview of uh, this session we can deal with this question at uh, some other point of time there is a similar question what impact will the current crisis have on 2024 elections in india uh it's 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 still uh, far away we are four years away from 2024 elections uh, there are important state assembly elections that are coming and we have to see what impact it would have on those state assembly elections most important of them would be in bihar this year itself whether we are able to conduct those elections and the issues uh, that uh, are there today because of corona virus whether those issues are going to play any role in bihar assembly election it would uh, give us enough uh, clues about what the role this crisis would play in 2024 election but uh, in, a, in 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 a current situation uh, four years is quite quite a long time aniket moon is asking will there be a bipolar world again as us and china being two poles if so will us be able to unite the world against china what will be geopolitics in this bipolar world uh, well interesting question whether there would be bipolarity as uh, us and china they are again um, emerging as two important poles in the in the world mm, frankly speaking i don't see bipolarity the way it existed during cold war period uh, it's it's really not going to happen one of the important features of that bipolarity was that united states was willing to play uh, cobol of coalitions play play a global role uh, cobol of coalitions across the world invest heavily wherever it was required which was quite evident in the marshall plan and uh, then onwards today uh, mentality of united states really is not like that it is becoming more and more inward looking and therefore we really are not sure much would depend on what would be result of us presidential election this year however if it would be continuity of the present administration in united states then united states really would not be much interested in doing that. uh the another characteristic of the earlier bipolar world was rise of socialism in the world that socialism was on the rise during those period 
after soviet union china became socialist there were socialist revolutions in some other countries socialist movements were strong in many other countries etc today we don't see such a phenomena uh, and as a result of it uh, i don't think that the uh, we, we would make a return to bipolarity but geopolitics would exist uh, as it was there during bipolarity and after the bipolarity so uh, russia is not really going to give up its claim uh, on its periphery in east asia particularly uh, in, 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 in on east europe particularly uh, china is not going to give up its efforts to uh, to, to 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 create its uh, influence and hegemony in central asia in south asia in southeast asia etc so those processes definitely are going to be intensified uh ritwik shankar is asking can india rise as a leader in the medical and pharmacy sector after covid 19 due to supply of uh, hydrochloroquine bcc vaccine and pharmaceutical uh well yes there is a chance to india however this is something that india uh, has been doing even before the current crisis even before the corona virus india uh, was doing it india has just continued it uh now in this crisis anyone who would come out with vaccine against corona virus and its mass production they would win the game they would emerge as the leader so india is concentrating and india must must concentrate in developing a vaccine to treat uh, covid 19 uh, india is partnering with some of the institutions in united states there was news yesterday that india and israel are also uh, cooperating uh, in this field etc so it would depend if india really would be able to come up with a vaccine then uh, uh, suddenly india would be one of the important leaders in this field however as we have seen uh, and that's a very important point when i said earlier that uh, china is not going to vanish uh, from the race and it's going to play important role Uh, it was evident from the fact that china was able to uh, to 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 uh, ensure production of medical kits and other uh, equipments that were required to fight corona virus uh, uh, pandemic within china and outside china as well so that shows us china's strength at this point of time uh, too well medha patki is asking whether us and india being two poles uh, i don't think so uh, one uh, there is a tremendous gap in terms of power capabilities between the united states and india and there are other countries who are still above india uh, to try to match capabilities of united states secondly uh, the policies in india uh, in at least last Uh, 15 years uh, or so, from 2005 6 onwards or so, uh, these policies are to emerge as one of the poles in association with United States. That United States would be the important pole in the world. Along with that, India also will be the important pole. But uh, the interest of India and United States should not collide with each other. And therefore, they uh, the, the, all the attempts in last 15 years. have been in a direction where in we are not going to challenge united states but we are going to cooperate with united states and uh, therefore i don't see that uh, we would be uh, a pole vis-a-vis united states or uh, or so uh, so uh, this leaves us to the question of exactly uh, what type of world order uh, we are going to see post covid 19 Uh, as i mentioned that we have seen certain phases in the westphalian order post second world war now post covid 19 uh, the westphalian order would continue that uh, everyone would hang on to principles of sovereignty independence uh, etc would protect their national borders would become much more nationalistic uh, in short to medium terms or so so we are not we are we really are not giving away the westphalian order and uh, then what 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 type of a system we would have under westphalian order as some of you asked whether it would be a bipolarity no i don't think it would be a bipolarity uh, whether it would be a multipolarity 
it could be a multipolarity but uh, in the short to medium term even there are less chances of multipolarity because of uh, two factors one is over nationalism in uh, many parts of the world and uh, which which basically are going to create regional tensions regional conflicts as well uh, which would prevent rise of poles in uh, in in in, in uh, many regional places uh for example um, uh, in 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 europe uh, uh no one country would like uh, other country to emerge more powerful and therefore they are not going to cooperate uh, so all are going to look inwards uh and secondly it's because of the economic depression uh that multipolarity would not emerge any time soon for multipolarity the conditive condition is economic prosperity around the world that many countries in the world should see economic growth development and economic prosperity that's not going to happen in short to medium term and therefore there is really there really would not be boost to the multipolar process to multipolarity so then what is it it would be more a semblance of a scenario which existed particularly in europe prior to second world war first world war in between first and second world war also where in everyone were extra cautious about their sovereignty nationalism was on rise but there was no order to maintain the processes there was no order to maintain peace there was no order to ensure that conflicts could be resolved or at least attempts would be made to resolve conflicts peacefully that resulted into first world war second world war there were no global institutions <coughs> forget about global institutions there were no effective european institutions uh, at the european level that were in existence prior to first world war even between first world war and second world war but nation states were increasingly becoming powerful so we are falling back to that stage at the global level this stage was in existence mostly in europe prior to second world war now this is going to be the worldwide phenomena that westphalian order would be there without decorative pieces or decorative pieces would be fed off uh, of global institutions international and global regimes etc they are going to become increasingly irrelevant whether uh, the trade regime whether the climate uh, the regimes to tackle climate change whether the regimes to uh ensure arms control disarmament etc so it is a uh, unraveling of the world that was being constructed or unraveling of the attempts that we are being made to construct a new world order post second world war and we are falling back to the world which was there uh, prior to uh, prior pri prior to the second world war at the global level and uh, this uh, is uh, really a dim scenario that uh, the history has taught us that such kind of scenario really has not helped anybody but has led the world to further confusion further distrust and uh, uh, and a conflict arising out of confusion distrust and competition so we are uh, moving towards that direction in the post covid 9 world Uh, and with this uh, i uh, would like to end this webinar if there are more questions you can write your questions in the message box here and i would try to answer to uh, your questions as per my capabilities thank you so much stay safe stay at home good day